There is no better time to start a YouTube channel than right now. Whenever you're watching this, it's the perfect time for you to start because small YouTube channels are blowing up faster than ever when combining these timeless strategies with new strategies. In this video, we're gonna be breaking it down, all of it, how you can set yourself up for success, what to do when you can't pick a niche, how to come up with viral video ideas, shorts, what the strategy there, how often you should post, and so much more. As always, these tips and strategies are things that worked really well for me to help me get to 250,000 subscribers in two years. I'm hoping by sharing them, it will help you too. Feel free to test it out for yourself. I'm not saying it's my way or the highway, I know everybody's journey is going to look a little bit different, but these are the things that helped me. Step number one, setting your expectations. Congratulations, you've picked probably the hardest and most time consuming platform to post and grow on. Every step from planning, scripting, filming, editing, even posting your YouTube videos takes longer than on any other platform. Can you be consistent, not just now, but if you wanna be a YouTuber, can you be consistent posting for an entire year? for two years, for five years. If you want a platform that spits out instant gratification where you can post and instantly see results, YouTube is not that. You're playing the long game here. So don't get stuck focusing on your channel performance or analytics in the very beginning. Just start before you're ready, commit, don't stop. The future you, one year from today, is going to be incredibly thankful that you just started doing instead of wishing. Because you'll find that even though it does get tough, if you just keep going, this really is the most rewarding platform out there. I'm not saying analytics and insights and stuff like that aren't important, of course they are, but when you're just starting out, especially on YouTube, don't rely on those as motivation to keep going. Because again, long game. We're playing the long game here. Step number two, setting up your channel for success. Before you even start posting, let's set up your account for success so that when you do start posting and people visit your channel, their immediate response is, ooh, yep, subscribe. There are three things that go into setting up your channel for success. Picking your unique niche, setting up pillar rotation, and basic account setup, which believe it or not, is part of your YouTube strategy. Now, if you watched any of the how to grow on YouTube videos, then you've probably heard this whole pick a niche or pick a niche, or I never know how to say that word. So I'll probably be saying it both ways throughout this video to satisfy everyone. So before you roll your eyes and say, oh my gosh, I've heard all of this before because Guilty, I used to do that a lot. Anytime somebody said that, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I know. We're going to approach this a little bit differently than how everyone typically teaches it. Do you need to pick a niche? How do you actually do that? What to do if you can't pick one? Can lifestyle be a niche? So let's answer all those questions. Do you need to niche down? Yes and no. There's a reason that everybody says to niche down. There are a lot of benefits that come with it. You're able to grow your channel faster this way because by staying in a niche, it helps the algorithm understand what your channel is about so they can push your videos to the right people. And two, it makes your content easily bingeable for new people who come across your channel. So the reason you hear this tip a lot is because it works. It works for the algorithm, it works for your audience, it's a win-win. So if you're posting about fitness tips and Amazon fashion and flipping a house, it might be hard for YouTube to understand the overarching theme of your channel. Therefore, they don't know who to push your videos to or they're pushing your videos to the wrong people. It gets confusing. So how do you actually pick your niche if that's a strategy that you want to implement? First, let's unpack the actual definition of that word, niche a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. Now, most people focus on the first part of that definition, a specialized segment of the market. That's where you get people saying, oh, my niche is fashion, fitness, travel, coffee. You know, you get those general topics. But people often forget about the second part of that definition, which is for a particular kind of product or service. So it's more than just saying, oh, fitness. <laughs> what unique approach can you create for that topic? What kind of fitness? Who is it for? 
What problem do you solve? Why should somebody even subscribe to your channel? Here are some examples. Instead of saying fitness as your niche, maybe it's at home fitness for busy moms. That answers the what kind of fitness and who is it for? With that in mind, you're able to create videos around that niche or niche. Let's say you don't know what your niche is or you can't just pick one single topic. Then what do you do? I mean, where's all my multi-passionate people who want lifestyle to be your niche? Because same, right? <laughs> Instead of focusing on the topic, what you could do instead is focus on the who you're trying to reach or the unique approach that you have. For example, if you want to have an audience or a community of stay at home moms, think about what sort of videos would they be looking for on YouTube and make that. Think about the community you aspire to have in five years. What does your channel look like? Who are watching your videos? Thinking about them specifically, make videos directly catered to them. Or maybe you're like, I don't know who I wanna make videos for. Or if you do want to make videos about fitness tips, Amazon fashion, how to flip a house, how can you create an overarching theme across all of those videos? Your uniqueness, you are the theme. Let's say you're a college student. Maybe those videos look like how to stay in shape for busy college students. Amazon fashion for under $20 for broke college students. Picking a niche can and will help you grow faster. That's what I did. That's how I was able to grow so fast in such a small amount of time. But that niche and your journey of figuring out what that is, if you don't already know what it is, is going to look different for everyone. If you're somebody who hasn't started your YouTube channel because you feel stuck at this step, just say screw it and post. Because the more you post, the more you'll find what feels natural and authentic to you. In, in the beginning of my channel, I was posting random-ish, like telling ghost stories on an abandoned train, doing a drunk boyfriend tag, vlogging a trip to Julian with my friends. Like it was all over the place. And that's because I didn't know what I wanted to create yet. So just start creating because the more you post, the more you'll feel like, ooh, I really liked filming this sort of content or this felt natural to me or my audience received this video really well. Even, oh, I hated editing a video like that, you know? So just say screw it, go no strategy balls. Can I say that, is that appropriate? And just, just post. Okay, now that you have your niche defined, you're going to set up your pillar rotation. Your pillar rotation is the topics or types of videos that you rotate posting between. Most people refer to these as your content pillars, which is like the sub topics that you talk about on your channel. I'll give you three examples of this. Example one, for those of you who have a solid niche defined, for me, my niche is social media tips for content creators. That's my overarching theme to my channel. And then the subtopics that I talk about and I rotate talking about is Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, how to make money. And the fifth one is a general my story. All of those subtopics fit in the category of social media tips for content creators. If you go and look at my channel, all my recent videos are rotating, talking about all of those things. I have Instagram tips, YouTube, TikTok, making money. And then mixed in there are kind of vlog style videos of how I was able to do certain things. So kind of documenting my story, storytelling, not so much training tutorial type videos. I usually stick between three to five content pillars because it, keeps your content concise and easy to follow. So let's do two other examples. Example number two, for those of you who generally have a niche defined like fitness, but you can't think of topics or subtopics to talk about. What your videos will look like will be an educational type video. Gym workouts, a workout with me, and how I blank. Here, instead of rotating between different topics, you're rotating between the type of video educational, inspirational, relatable, and entertaining. The educational one might be sitting, talking head like this, where you talk about form for certain exercises. So maybe you just have a bunch of videos that's like back barbell squat, and then it's educating, okay, this is your feet, this is how you bend, this is where you hold the bar, you know? So it's like educational, and then you have those gym workouts. Maybe somebody wants to go to the gym, it's like leg day. So it's like gym workout for leg day, women, booty pump. <laughs> I don't know. So that's more of like, okay, this is how you do an entire workout. 
a little bit more interactive where somebody can watch it at the gym. You can have a workout with me video where it's like, come with me while I work out and you're working out, you're talking to the camera, kind of vlog, entertaining or relatable style videos, especially if you're like maxed out and you're like, oh, total fail, haha. You know, so it's like more casual workout with me's. And then you also can do a how I insert transformation here, inspirational content, how I was able to hit a new PR with my deadlifts, you know, like things like that, how I was able to deadlift more than my boyfriend. Instead of rotating about topics, you just rotate the types of videos you're creating around fitness in general. And then example three, if you don't have a niche at all, or you want to post more lifestyle content, your strategy is actually going to be focused around our step three, which is content creation and SEO strategy. So if that's you, then keep on watching. Before going into step three, the last thing you need to do to set up your account for success is basically setting up the actual basics of your account. I mean, your profile photo, banner image, channel description, links, etc. All of these things are important to do strategically, not just like setting up a dating profile or whatever. With YouTube or any social media platform for that matter, everything that you do is intentional and has strategy behind it. This whole setup thing can be a whole video in and of itself. So for a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to set up your channel, I created the ultimate YouTube starter workbook. In this workbook, you'll get a checklist for how to set up your account. You'll have an interactive worksheet for doing content research and the five steps for how to grow your channel and so much more. Yes, it's free. I'll link it down below in the description and in the pinned comments so you can download it right now. Step number three, creating content, your SEO strategy. This is where things get a little juicy. What do you post? What type of content should you make? How do you come up with content ideas? All the things. The foundation of your YouTube strategy will revolve around SEO, but don't freak out. Don't freak out. I know SEO is scary, but it's, it's really not. It's really not. Let's just, let's call it something else right now. Let's call it the strategy to help people find you faster. You want people to find your channel and your videos, right? So what actions are you taking, intentional actions that are actually going to help people find you? What are you doing? Did you know that 65% of people use YouTube to help them solve a problem or answer a question? It's the biggest search engine right next to Google. So what sort of videos can you make to help people find you faster? In the beginning of my journey, these are the types of videos that I focused on creating. Search-based content, trending content, and pocket content. With search-based content, I'm thinking about my audience here. What do they want? Not what do I want, what do I wanna make, what do I think they might like? No. Like factually, you have proven evidence that they want this thing. What do they search for? To figure this out, you gotta do a little bit of research. You gotta put some effort in. Believe it or not, YouTube involves strategy. It's not just some like, ooh, I came up with this cool idea. Let me vlog it, let me post it. Viral. I know maybe that's how it is every once in a blue moon for some rare creators, but for most of us, we gotta do research. We gotta strategize. What you're going to do, you're going to use current search engines to tell you what your audience is looking for. I like to use YouTube for this, TikTok, Pinterest, answer the public to come up with my content ideas. So the niche that we talked about earlier, those pillars that we talked about earlier, these are gonna come in handy right now. In the search bar of any preferred search engine that you use, type in your niche, type in your subtopics and see what is suggested below it. So if I go to TikTok right now and I type coffee, just coffee, look to see what's recommended under it. It says coffee ideas, coffee recipes, easy coffee recipes, coffee recipes from home, Starbucks dupe recipes, you know, things like that. What are other people looking for? Great, you got some more content ideas. You can also do this on YouTube. Type in your topic, your niche, your categories. I type in Instagram. What's recommended? It looks like people are looking for Instagram growth, Instagram followers, how to get more Instagram followers, Instagram tips. So I'm like, okay, what sort of videos can I make that involve Instagram tips in the title? 
You could do that same thing on Pinterest, even answer the public. You could type in one word and it's going to tell you the top searches using the who, what, when, where, why, how words. So if I go there and I type influencer, answer the public's going to tell me, hey, these are all the common searches that people look for on Google using the word influencer. Now remember YouTube being a search based platform where 65% of people usually go there to get answers of some sort. My first videos are gonna be educational. They're getting the answers from me. Three other tools that I use in tandem with YouTube to help me come up with topic ideas are TubeBuddy, vidIQ, and Keywords Everywhere. TubeBuddy is great to show you how likely you are to rank using certain keywords. So you'll see that on the side of searches. vidIQ, I like to use to get recommended keywords that I could use in my videos of like, hey, you should target these keywords. And then Keywords everywhere is how I research my niche keywords, subtopics to see, okay, how many searches are there actually per month on this thing? When you're starting out, what you can do with keywords everywhere is type in a, something in a search bar. And if it says 1000 searches a month or less, that would be great for you to target because that's not a lot of competition. And I try to shoot for how many subscribers you currently have. So like for me, I'm at around 250,000 subscribers. That's kind of the top range I'm looking for of, okay, this keyword has about 250,000 searches per month. That's one that I can target. Maybe if it has a million searches per month, that might be like, okay, a little harder for me to rank in, but we're gonna stick to this number. So that's kind of a general rule of thumb that I stick to when using keywords everywhere. A common mistake I see creators make is doing the research last minute. Like you've already filmed a video, you've already vlogged, it's edited, it's ready to go live. Now you're doing your keyword research to create a cool title. You're going to see better results if you do the keyword research before you film, because then you know, okay, this is what I could talk about in my video. I could talk about these keywords. I could answer this question because even if it is a vlog, you can drop those little pieces of nuggets within the vlog so that it's providing value and you know the value you're providing up front instead of trying to figure out, okay, I filmed this. Uh, what value does this even provide for my audience? No, you're able to go into filming confidently knowing, okay, this is the value that this video is going to bring to my people. Now, the second piece of content that I talked about was trending content. Adapting to trends is obviously super important on social media, and that's going to look completely different to every single person who watches this video, because we all have different trends that will come up on our YouTube page. Let me explain. For me, an example of adapting to trends is posting Instagram update videos. Yeah, Instagram's updating like every two seconds, and so that's kind of annoying, but it's great for me and my niche because it gives me new stuff to talk about and it keeps me up to date. It keeps my subscribers up to date. It's current and fresh and it keeps things like, oh, here's a new trend that's been adapted to. So YouTube updates is how I can adapt to trends or trending content within my niche. Or in addition to Instagram updates, a video that blew up my channel was Instagram Reels tutorial. That was the first Instagram Reels tutorial video, not ever on YouTube, but I posted it within the first week that Instagram Reels came out because I knew they were gonna launch this new feature and I knew that was going to be a huge opportunity for my goals and my channel if I created, or one of the first people to create an in-depth tutorial. So that week I was studying the platform using Reels and that carried my channel for like an entire year. Another example of a YouTuber who did this really well to help her blow up was Emma Chamberlain. Her YouTube video that exploded her channel was the conspiracy theory YouTube video that she did. At the time, y'all know Shane Dawson and his conspiracy theory videos. He was like popping off for those. Like everybody went to Shane Dawson for conspiracy theories and everybody was making these conspiracy theory type videos. Emma Chamberlain did her own twist where it was like conspiracies of other YouTubers. So it used those big name YouTubers like Shane Dawson and her conspiracy theories about them. And it was like funny. It wasn't even like a serious, this is scary video. It was just like 
her personality, her uniqueness, and her unique approach on this whole conspiracy theory trend that was going around. So what are those trends in your niche and how can you adapt those with your unique perspective and personality? These ones I don't do often because they're more exhausting for me, <laughs> like trying to stay up to date and then like whipping up a script, filming it really fast and like trying to get it up live within that trending time frame. So if you're somebody who can respond quickly to trends, this is gonna be great for you. For me, I love to batch my videos. Like I batch, so, like you're watching this video somewhere mid January. I'm filming it on December 1st because I wanna take a break for the holidays, but also make sure that I have YouTube videos that are still relevant by the time they go live. You know what I mean? So trending content isn't my go-to, but it works, especially if you're starting out and you need some new eyes on your channel. And then the third piece of content that I created was pocket content, trademark pending. Not really, but like I call it pocket content because I think that's cute. So pocket content is content that no one else is creating. So you're gonna do it. You're filling in the gaps. You're filling in those pockets. There's little, there's like a bundle of videos on topics with like different gaps and different pockets. And you're just gonna hop in those little pockets and you're gonna fill in the gaps and people are gonna be like, wow, nobody's talking about this. Heck yeah, subscribe. An example of pocket content. And this one went viral for my channel. This one was how to create your own Instagram aesthetic. Basically me as somebody who's trying to grow on YouTube, trying to figure out how the heck to edit my photos because everybody had these cool aesthetic feeds and all the videos that I would look up, it said how I edit my photos, how I edit my photos. And it was like teaching like, this is how I edit. So it's like super moody and na, 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 na. And like, I didn't want to know how somebody edited their photos. I wanted to figure out how to create my own aesthetic because like, I didn't want to copy someone else's. I was like, okay, how do I create a cohesive feed in general? And nobody had a video like that. And I was like, okay, I see you. I'll raise you all in. <laughs> I don't even play poker, but we're all in. So I did research and I'm like, I'm gonna figure out how to create your own Instagram aesthetic so I can make it into a video teaching people, hey, this is how you can create your own editing theme. No matter what editing theme you want, this is how you do it. And that video blew up. Those were the type of videos that I focused on in the beginning of my journey to reach as many new people as possible. And then as I started to grow, I would incorporate other videos like nurture content and selfish content. Basically nurture content is videos for my current subscribers. I don't have to rank in search results. I don't have to convince somebody to follow me. It's just nurturing my relationship with my current subscribers to keep them engaged. And then selfish content, that's just like videos for myself. The ones that I've always wanted to make or I'm just in the mood to film, maybe it's not really relevant to my niche. I have this series testing overly sponsored products. I love testing things. Like I wanna do a coffee taste test video where like I go to different areas in my town and taste coffee places. And it kind of ties in because it's like overly sponsored brands that are all over Instagram or TikTok or YouTube and testing them to see if they're worth the hype. So like doesn't really fall into it. It's not really for search results. It's not really for my target audience. It's just like for fun for me and I've always wanted to do it. So that's kind of the content I started to incorporate as I started seeing results on my channel. Again, if you feel stuck at the beginning stages of your YouTube channel, you need to just say screw it and just make whatever the heck you want. So many people self-sabotage their own success by holding themselves back thinking they have it all figured out before they post. The strategy must be perfect. The equipment must be perfect. I need to know how to write the perfect YouTube titles. No, just no. Start before you're ready be willing to take messy action and learn from it. And that's where you'll start seeing the results that you wanna see. Speaking of messy action, let's talk about shorts, shall we? So right now, it's estimated that YouTube shorts receive about 15 billion views every day. Just shorts alone have helped creators explode their channel by millions. An example of that is Ian Boggs. He's grown his channel to 4 billion lifetime views with 73% of that streaming from his shorts feed. When Ian leaned into shorts, he gained 5 million subscribers between 2021 and 2022. If you're not posting shorts, get on it. What the heck do you even post to shorts? Great question. First of all, 
Every niche is gonna be different. I know, I say that a lot in this video. This strategy is gonna look different. It's gonna look different for me. It's because it is, and I don't wanna tell you, you have to do something one way to see results. And then that limits your thinking. And then you're like, oh, I'm stuck here in this box. I have to do it this way, Millie said so. I want your creative freedom to be explored. So I'll give you examples of what worked for me, but doesn't mean something else won't work for you, okay? Um, don't know where I was going with that, but. You're welcome. For me, from posting to shorts every day for 60 days, this is what I learned. First of all, when I first started posting to shorts, do you think I knew what I was doing? No. I feel like there was not a video on YouTube that was like, this is the ultimate shorts strategy. There wasn't a video like that. I couldn't really learn from anyone because shorts is so new. I just had to make it up and I had to be okay with taking messy action. So what I did for my first 60 shorts, I repurposed content from my Instagram reels and TikTok. Now I know there's a lot of misconceptions or there's a lot of opinions on repurposing and recycling content. But for me, I just wanted to post consistently and figure out, okay, what's working, what doesn't, what should I focus on? And I have a bunch of Instagram reels and a bunch of TikToks. So I used snaptick.app and snapinsta.app to remove the watermarks so that I could repurpose them, upload them to shorts and see what's working. What I discovered was posting to shorts using desktop. That's king right there. That is the ultimate way to post a short. You can make your shorts on your phone, upload it as a draft or unlisted, but post with desktop because that's when you could go in and do the title, the description, the tags, thumbnail. You could be really intentional with your strategy when you use desktop. Focus on search terms. I had a different range of videos. So some of them were ed talking head educational videos like this. Some were more lip syncing entertainment. So I would actually intentionally categorize the videos to either it's really educational or like this is not educational. It's just supposed to be funny, haha, to entertainment. So I would categorize it and then use search terms or keywords like Instagram tips, whatever that video was about. I noticed that videos that looked really casual actually performed better or got more views than ones that had like a fancy YouTube setup, which were recycled from these YouTube videos. And the titles that had emojis got more attention or clicks than titles that didn't use emojis. So if you have no idea what to post to shorts right now and you have a bunch of reels or TikToks just sitting in your back pocket, start with those, set it up to auto post for 30 days. You have 30 TikToks that you move over to YouTube you have it post for 30 days, go back and see which ones worked, which ones didn't, and adjust your strategy from there. Step number four, posting your video. You've done your research, you've filmed, you've edited. So now how often should you be posting? How long should your videos be? What consistency should you have? Scheduling your videos, all the things. First of all, let's get rid of all of the should, haves, and needs in those subconscious questions or conscious questions that you have. Like how many videos should I post a week? What should my consistency be? How many videos do I have to have in order to go viral? Like the words should, have, and need. You don't have to do anything to see success. Like there's nothing that like you should be doing. I feel like when we use those words should have a need, we set these subconscious expectations of, or pressure of like, oh my gosh, I have to be doing this in order to be successful. And that's just not true. There is no magical number for how many videos you have to post. There is no magical length where it's like, if your video is 13 minutes and 17 seconds, oh my gosh, you're gonna go viral. Like there's not a strategy like that. So just take those words out of your vocabulary and instead replace it with like, okay, what could I be doing? In general, your posting strategy will revolve around thumbnails and like titles. Your thumbnail, everybody says it, it's probably the most important thing. I still struggle with thumbnails and figuring out what's going to get clicks and what's not going to get clicks or like communicating my ideas of a thumbnail to my thumbnail editor. So I still struggle with that, but I've noticed thumbnails that evoke an emotion or create a relatable emotion to the viewer, those thumbnails work really well. Or even thumbnails that show a result. So if it's not showing an emotion, it's showing some sort of result. And I think that resonates really well with a viewer. I'm not somebody that likes to do like clickbait stuff where it's like, I bought a new car. And then it's like, really, I just like rented a car 
and then returned it. You know, like I don't want to make false promises with my thumbnails, but anytime I have an emotion or a result, those perform well. For example, I posted a video that was, if I had to start from zero on Instagram, this is what I would do. And that title doesn't really have much search engine capability or search capability. It's like not people are starting searching like if I had to start from zero on Instagram. So the thumbnail though was really, really good. It showed emotion and transformation. On one side of the thumbnail was the defeat, the sadness and the weight that a lot of people feel on their Instagram journey trying to grow. That was one side of the thumbnail. And on the other side, it was like the happiness, the excitement of like, oh my gosh, I finally did it. So it showed that relatability of like, oh my gosh, this is where I'm at, but I wanna be here. So that's, it incorporated both of those things. And I think that's why that thumbnail has a really good CTR, which stands for click-through rate. The better your click-through rate is for a video and the better the average view duration is, is going to tell YouTube like, hey, this is a good video, let's spit it out to more people. So your click-through rate, that's what gets somebody to click your video. That's the combination of your thumbnail and your title. You're gonna play around with that to see what combination works well for you. I feel like my titles work best when they're half in all caps and half not in caps. I've tried a few different strategies and for some reason for my audience, they love me yelling at them, but like, <laughs> I don't wanna yell, but that, it just gets people's attention, I guess. And so you have your click-through rate, but then the average view duration. So your average view duration, I'm just gonna read it word for word, is the estimated average minutes watched per view for the selected content. So the more minutes that somebody spends on your video, that's gonna tell YouTube that that's a good video, which is why on my channel, I'll have a mix of short videos with instant information, like an eight minute video, a 10 minute video, and long videos like this one, where the average view duration on this video is probably gonna be a lot longer than 10 minutes because this is a long video with actually good information. So if you're gonna have a long video, try to make it as engaging and fast paced as possible, giving people the information that they're looking for. Don't just do like 60 minutes of you just like sitting there doing the dishes, I don't know. Have your video be as long as it needs to be or as short as it needs to be. There's no magic there. Let's talk about posting consistency. Everybody says, be consistent, be consistent, but what does consistency actually look like? And consistency, again, for you is going to look different than on me, on a David Dobrik, Think Media, all the things, right? Notice consistency doesn't say every day. Consistency means posting once a week. Consistency means posting twice a week. Like that's not what consistency means. It's what's a realistic cadence that you can keep up with that fits your lifestyle. If you had to be consistent on YouTube for one year, what does that look like? that you can realistically keep up with. If you already, if you have a nine to five job and you're juggling that and you're a parent, maybe posting weekly isn't realistic for you and that's okay. It doesn't have to be weekly. It's just consistently. So maybe instead of weekly, it's on the first of the month and on the 15th of the month. You do two videos every month. YouTube will see that as consistency. You have one on the first, one on the 15th, one on the first, one on the That's consistent. Maybe you don't have a job right now and you don't have kids. You just, maybe you just quit your corporate job and you're like, I got nothing to do. And you can post more often. Maybe you could do two long form videos a week and five shorts every week because you're like, all I have to do is film. So you're gonna just bang out those shorts and have some long form content where if people find you through shorts, they can binge your long form videos, feeding into that average view duration and getting people to stay on YouTube a little bit longer. My consistency is one video a week. I've played around with two videos a week. Like last year for almost the entire year, I posted two videos a week. It was an educational video and a vlog every week. And that just wasn't realistic for me. It worked, but it definitely brought the quality of my educational videos down. I really enjoy creating educational type videos. So I was like, okay, that doesn't work for me. I need to do once a week because then I could really give more value in one video. So when combining shorts and long form content, what consistency can you do? Can you post a short Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Can you do shorts on Monday and then a YouTube video on Friday? What does consistency look like for you and the lifestyle that you have? And just pick that, see if you could stick to it for three to six months. Okay, there's a lot that could go into step four with posting. 
that might have to be its own video after this. So let's jump into step five, know the platform. If you want to dominate any platform, you'll need to know the ins and outs of that platform. What makes it breathe? What makes it come to life? Study that platform and gain as much knowledge as you can so that you can work with its algorithm instead of against it. Part of understanding the algorithm is also understanding the users of that platform. So here are some fun facts, stats to get you started. I'll link all the resources for these stats down below. YouTube had over 2.3 billion monthly active users in 2022 and is projected to have 2.85 billion users by 2025. It's a very active platform. There's a lot of opportunity there, a lot of opportunity. YouTube is the number two website by traffic in the United States right under Google, which like makes sense. YouTube is owned by Google. They're the top two ranking websites as of right now. 51% of YouTube viewers say that they rely on YouTube videos to learn something new. So with that information, 51% of users rely on YouTube to learn something new. Maybe 51% of your content is teaching something to your audience. Just a thought. People in blogs are the most popular YouTube video category, making up 32% of the videos posted on its site. This includes vlogging, commentary type channels. So no, vlogging is not dead. You can still see great success there with the right strategy. YouTube is the most popular with those aged between 15 and 25 and 26 and 35 with 77% of each of those demographics using the platform, but it's actually popular regardless of age based on this graph here. So the more you study a platform and you know these statistics about the platform and the users, the more you're able to be like, oh, I can create content like this. I can create content catered to these types of people. And on top of that, study other successful channels in your niche. Success leaves clues, right? So, Go to other people who are successful in your niche or the niche that you want to be in and study their successful videos or their most successful videos. You can filter their videos by the most popular. Look at their top eight most popular videos. What are the topics that their videos rotate between? What titles did they use? What thumbnails did they use to capture attention? Yeah, you can study other people's channels to learn from their success and apply it to your strategy as well. So if you are still watching, I have a bonus step for you. Bonus step number six, don't be afraid to invest in yourself and into your dreams. You can learn through spending time trying to figure it out on your own and learning through making your own mistakes, or you can learn from other people's mistakes and save time to see quicker results. This goes into studying the platform, studying other creators, picking up books like YouTube Secrets, watching other YouTube channels that teach YouTube strategy. You could take courses, YouTube courses that teach you literally how to grow on YouTube in a quick and efficient mainstream way. So with that said, what's next? What's the next step for you? First, you're going to download the Ultimate YouTube Starter Workbook. Again, there's pages of free knowledge and interactive activities so that you can take action today. And if you're wondering what does running a YouTube channel look like behind the scenes? What is it really like to post every week and make consistent content? Then you can watch this video next for a behind the scenes look at my YouTube process, how I organize my videos, script, plan, film, and prepare all of my content to send to video editors. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to download the ultimate YouTube starter workbook that I have linked down below and I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy, bye.